The Grunch of Giants, Chapter 1, by R. Buckminster Fuller. Phi times phi times pho times fum to the fourth power. I haven't fully figured out the math part of the title because it's like an equation, but it references Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack the Giant Slayer, Jack the Giant Killer, Shakespeare's King Lear, Orwell's 1984. So, you know, the the name of the book is Grunch of Giants, and Jack and Jack and the Beanstalk, I guess, slayed the giant. So, and then I guess Jack went into, you know, discovered a breakaway civilization that he wasn't supposed to know about. I don't know, you know, but yeah. So maybe Fee Fi Fo Fum are the four elements that make up Grunch, and their power is magnified to the fourth power. I'm just guessing, but. Clearly there's something, some kind of play on word going on with that title. The Invisible Giants. There's no word to describe them. And Fuller says they are 1,000 miles tall with their arms interlocked, invisible, abstract, a legal contrivance, an army of giants. And in this book, we will simply refer to them as Grunch. And Grunch is an acronym for annual gross universe cash heist. It pays annual dividends of greater than $1 trillion U.S. dollars, and that's in 1983 dollars. Annual dividends of $1 trillion. So imagine how much they're worth, because at this point we don't know what the, uh, the interest rate is of these uh, investments. But as far as invisible goes... You know, uh, I was hearing a Catherine Austin Fitz lecture today, and she was saying the invisible financial empire. And uh, so invisible is a big deal in this book. All the stuff that we can't see. Grunch's power comes from their invisible know-how. Invisible chemical, invisible metallurgical, invisible electronic, and invisible cybernetic realms of reality. It's amazing that Fuller even could think of the sentence cybernetic realms of reality in 1983. The Grunch of Giants are on average 34 years old. The majority of them come from the post-World War II military-industrial complex that Eisenhower spoke of in his farewell speech. The Grunch of Giants is not to be confused with the international copper and tin cartels. Grunch consists of corporately interlocked owners of a vast, invisible empire. You know, the vast, invisible empire. It kind of reminds me of, this is almost like conspiracy theory of talking about how all the companies are all part of one gigantic umbrella corporation. And they probably are. The stuff that's out there, everything is so hidden and we're all fed this phony version of reality and we focus on all the wrong things and we don't see where all the money is and the power. It's all invisible. The invisible empire includes airwaves and satellites. Imagine how much other phenomena is out there that we don't know about. You know, we have certain instruments that let us see certain things. We have microscopes and whatnot. But imagine the instruments that they have of phenomena that we've never even heard of. Imagine the vantage point and the information they get from satellites. The visible empire has skyscraper cities all over the world. They have factories, research laboratories, and they're in the industrial deployment areas of Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea, and Hong Kong. The financial grunge empire controls the financial credit system of the non-communist world, controls the financial means of initiating any world magnitude, mass production, and distribution ventures. It grabs all of the best science university graduates and monopolizes all of the special theoretical know-how to exploit its vast inventory of already acquired invisible know-how technology. They essentially, they black shelve any disruptive technology and then meter and charge you for the rest of it. So if you ever wondered, you know, it's like, how did all of these 
skyscraper cities get built. Where did they get the money to do that? I mean, some of these cities are phenomenal. You could barely build a house, and they have skyscrapers and infrastructure streets. And and then if you tried to make something happen, you couldn't. But yet, all kinds of grand things get constructed and projects get created. I don't know anybody that owns these buildings. So much I don't know. And all of the hard drives and microchips and all that, it's all manufactured in other countries. I don't know anybody that's ever designed a motherboard or just all the advanced tech it's all made in other countries the va- they got a vast financial empire and and think of if you understand fractional reserve banking every time uh if every time a loan is created they could create 10 times the amount well imagine the course of the day as you know all around the world people are taking out loans all day that increases their ability 10 times per person so the amount of wealth that just gets created is is astonishing. So is there a group of people that control everything on the face of Earth? Well, the financial grunge empire certainly controls a lot. Who runs grunge? No one knows. But they control all the world banks, including the Swiss bank. They cross their T's and dot their I's. And this is to maintain technical legality. The Grunch law firm is named Machiavelli, Machiavelli, Adams, and Oil. They say that the second Machiavelli might really be mafia. The Grunch doesn't invent. They monopolize. They have a monopoly on the nowhere and a monopoly on the know-how. The Grunch does not possess the know-why. Grunch preoccupations. Absolute selfishness. Guaranteed gratifications. The Grunch has the ability to save mankind. 75,000 people starve to death each day. The world has 5% food surplus annually. So that means these people die needlessly. If 75,000 people starve to death each day, and the world has a 5% food surplus annually, that is pretty lame. Now, the Grunch didn't cause starvation, but they could end it. Grunch could end it and even make a profit doing so. The cost to end world hunger and poverty is 3% of their annual dividends. The result of doing this would curb overpopulation. So Fuller's making the argument here like, hey, you know, if you gave everybody a really high standard of living, it would benefit you, the Grunch being... Because, uh, you know, his premise, Fuller's premise is that overpopulation or the reproduction rate of third world nations far exceeds that of first world. Abundant physical resources. There has always been enough to go around. We just didn't have the know-how. We do now. In 1970, we figured out how to provide global abundance. Here's the quote from the book. In 1970... Our cornucopia of ever more swiftly accruing know-how overflowed and its content integrated synergetically so that we may now care for each earthian individual at a sustainable billionaire's level of affluence while living exclusively on less than 1% of our planet's daily energy income from our cosmically designed nuclear reactor, the sun, optimally located 92 million safe miles from us and safely interlinked with us by photosynthesis, wind, rain, wave, and all other weather behaviors. So you can see he's got a lot of gigantic sentences in this book and a vocabulary that may not roll with everybody. So that's why I'm trying to wrap these uh, little slides up to simplify it. We have been able to do so much with so little since 1970, 1969, And you'll see in later chapters that uh, the cost reduction of production has been reduced exponentially, but that cost savings has not been passed on to the consumer proportionally to the savings that the grunch has experienced. So they're making a killing and we're paying more and more. They continuously reduce their costs and raise their prices. And our wages don't get raised, 
but our costs do. It's nuts. Some of the improvements mentioned are the geodesic dome, satellites for exploration, satellites for communication, computer miniaturization, lasers, CDs. Well, they weren't called CDs yet. I forget what he calls them. It kind of sounded more like a laser disc, but he was impressed with lasers. And then he mentioned MacReady's flights. And I don't know what those are, but there they are. So I guess, you know, we do somewhat get a trickle down of all this. We do have pretty awesome computers in present day, although they're probably even more awesome in the secret world. We do have iPads. You know, right now I'm recording this whole thing on a computer in my house. And this is technology that people didn't have 50 years ago. You'd have to go to a studio. And this recording sounds light years beyond what they had to record with. So we did get something for it. I'm just saying. The abundance is real. It exists. In 10 years, we could transform the world and have all of humanity experience a standard of living higher than any humans have ever experienced. And it could be achieved while phasing out fossil fuels. The tech is so invisible that it's hard to explain and inform everyone that there is so much to go around that everyone could have this abundance and no longer do we need to live in a you or me, dog eat dog world. There is now enough for both. We have to convince humanity to exercise this option to end artificial scarcity and unlock the sustainable abundance that already exists. There is plenty for all. War is obsolete. Rush to get the word out. End artificial scarcity. Release the abundance. The, the term artificial scarcity wasn't used, but it, it, Fuller's version of it was used. And he was saying essentially the same thing. He, he saw the, the technology that exists and he just couldn't believe that it wouldn't be released for everybody to have so that everybody could have a billionaire standard of living. Who and what stand in the way? Major religions and politics thrive on the premise of artificial scarcity. Fuller calls it eternal inadequacy of life support inherent in the design of our planet Earth. It is possible for all of us to win. And how is what Grunch of Giants is all about. So yeah, so he didn't call it artificial scarcity. He called it the eternal inadequacy <laughs> The eternal inadequacy of life support inherent in the design of our planet Earth. So if you thought me saying artificial scarcity was uh, too advanced, imagine me saying the eternal inadequacy of life support inherent in the design of our planet Earth all the time. I, I enjoy that phrase, but artificial scarcity is a little bit easier to say. And again, the Grunt of Giants, this book is to say it's possible for all of us to win because it, He's saying that it, this stuff is being actively suppressed and it doesn't need to be suppressed. There's enough for everybody. So why? Why do we starve people? Why do we not give people the best possible life they could have? And I'm pretty sure it's more than just religions and politics uh, that, that stand in the way. There's, there's a big interest in many groups. Any group that has control and power and influence, they wouldn't want technology that could liberate you and make you independent come out and that would include businesses that would include governments that would include nearly everybody that's into power and control and the goal of grunge of giants is to say don't let them fool you into thinking that this technology doesn't exist that there's not enough to go around and all the fear that they sell you this is planet earth and we just have to have the know-how so demand the know-how Demand the technology. It's what I've always been saying. And that's why I'm reviewing this book because its agenda is my agenda. And that's to get you to demand a more advanced future in the present. We've been waiting for the future. It's about time the future is in the present. Demand the tech. And I'll see you in chapter two. There's a link to purchase Grunch of Giants in the description below. See you next time.